I want to remove the brake master cylinder from my 1980 Opel Cadet, which I'm preparing for motorsport, for a number of reasons. One being, I want to drain the brake fluid so that the lines can be rerouted through the interior of the car. I also want to get full access to the bulkhead in order to paint it properly. So I've chosen the shortest brake line route from the master cylinder and I'm just going to open it as if I was bleeding the brakes and I'll drain them into the jar which I use for collecting brake fluid. You'd normally set up just like this if you're trying to get air out of the system but in this case I'm going to be letting air in through the reservoir because I want a dry system so that I can take all these components apart without dripping nasty brake fluid all over the place. I'll pump the brake pedal a little bit but I don't want to overdo this because I don't want to damage the rubber seals inside the master cylinder. You can see that's already nearly emptied the reservoir and it's gone into this jar. The jar wasn't very clean to begin with but it's definitely worth changing this fluid. I'll let it drain a little while longer. As I said I don't want to labour the seals by pumping the brake too much. And you can see right here exactly why I want to reroute the brake lines. Uh, a rally car gets jacked up regularly uh, for changing tyres and that is so easy to get that caught by the jack and uh, then you could have a brake failure 10 minutes later on a rally stage It's the last thing you want. It's a dual circuit braking system on this car so I've jacked up the other side and I'm going to bleed this one in a moment. I'll let the other side drain for another minute and I'll get on with another job. I'm going to remove the front bumper. There's just two bolts in here on the inner wing and there's another pair on the other side but before I go in there I will tighten up the bleeding valve and move this brake fluid over to the other side so I don't want to spill that on myself while working under the car. Another couple of pumps to the pedal and that'll get the other section of the master cylinder drained. Back to the front bumper and it's now safe to remove the bolts on this side. I'm going to remove the front wings so that I'll be able to do surface treatments on the inner wing sections so it's necessary to have the bumper off. Okay so that's the front brakes drained. I'll close off the bleed screw there. Doing well so far, no major spillages. I'll actually lower the car back onto the ground now again as I'm caught for a bit of space at the back. I will release the pressure from the back brake lines just to ensure that the, the fluid level has dropped well below the master cylinder in the front. I've jacked and supported the rear and I'll remove the wheel for access. Similar system to the front. I'll put the bleeding pipe on to catch any liquid and just release the bleed screw. I'll give it a couple of pumps of the pedal. Now it's probably just pumping air at this stage but this decreases the chances of any leak when I disconnect the pipes. I'll give that a little bit of time to drain and while it does I'll remove the front wings. There's a row of screws along the top, some of which were missing on this side actually, and there's ones that go from the inside of the A pillar that are missing on both sides. And these are all here, the ones uh, connecting it to the valence. There's three, and there's this one at the back on the outside at the base of the A pillar. It is sealed along the top, just like the charade was but it's lost its grip at this stage in its life. I can give all that a bit of a clean. It's exactly the same procedure on the other side. And it just lifts away. I've closed off the right hand side rear now and I'm just going to drain the left hand side as well. While that's draining, I'll remove the rear bumper. As you move around this car, you'll see loads of red spots and these are areas where someone's put anti-rust paint after doing repairs in the past. So a lot of the hard work is done on this shell already. 
I think the arches were done. I think the rear valence was done. Uh, sections uh, at the back of the wheel arches. That's actually a new rear panel. There's a there's a tag on it on the uh, other side. So there's a screw through on each corner and four bolts across the back. The threads are holding it on. As I push the bracket, it releases. I'll remove the boot hatch while I'm here. It's gonna need a little bit of work and it'll be easier to do it off the car. And that'll make it easier for painting the actual shell too, if this is removed. I'll take off the rubber seal. Feeds over those hinges. Two more bolts and it can be removed. Back in the engine bay, I'm going to remove the speedo cable there from the gearbox so I can put a rag down to catch any brake fluid that may drip when I remove these four brake lines, one for each corner of the car. They're a little bit stiff. I better use a bit of penetrating oil. That one looks like it was replaced recently. Their routing is definitely non-original. So it'll be nice to do all this stuff neatly later in the project. And this has worked really well. There was very little fluid left in the master cylinder and it's a tidy job. Just two nuts left disconnecting the master cylinder from the vacuum booster. That's brilliant. I'm delighted to get that off without any major spillages. There's no stopping me now.